Hi guys, it's Heidi from Create Dream Explore, and this video today is going to be about tracking behavior in the classroom digitally. Every year I have two to four students in my classroom who have extra needs that um, tracking their behavior will help to eventually get them extra support, or it may help me to change how I interact with that student in order to help change their behavior. Now you may have already heard of an ABC chart. You may even use one in your classroom. ABC charts look like this, a uh, chart or checklist. They include the date and time, the antecedent, which was what was happening just prior to the behavior occurring, the behavior, so what actually happened, and a consequence, what happened after the behavior to resolve the problem. Um, the consequence may also uh, be just what happened. It doesn't have to be a punishment, um, for example, if a student shouts out or says something inappropriate, the consequence of that behavior might be that other students laughed. You can also record the duration, so how long the behavior lasted for, as well as the intensity. Was it a low intensity event or a high intensity event? This ABC chart happens to be in a checklist format with some things already entered, but there are other ones where they're totally blank and you just fill in um, the antecedent behavior consequence, etc. This ABC chart is an example of what a paper or printed copy might look like. You might also see these where there isn't a checklist and you just fill in what you've noticed in each of the categories. I found the paper checklist incredibly time consuming, especially if you have a student for which you are filling these out multiple times within an hour or multiple times a day. It becomes a lot of paper to keep track of. And I found that I, I often didn't fill them out because I'd run out of time or I'd forget to do it. So several years ago, I switched to a digital format and I'll go ahead and show you that now. I use Google Forms because it, it graphs the data for you. You can easily see patterns that are arising or times of day that are issues. It really does all of the work for analyzing the data for you. And then you can make decisions for that student based on the patterns in the data. So really quickly, if you're new to Google Forms, to start one, you would go to New, More, and Google Forms, and it will open up a Google Form for you. I have already created a Google Form for tracking, so I'm gonna go over and show you that, but this is what it looks like when you create a new form. It's just got the one sample question and a spot for some titles. So I will close that off. This is my behavior tracking sample form. You'll notice that in the title I called it Behavior Tracking ABC, and here I've got some initials. If I was using this in, in the classroom, I would get rid of the behavior tracking and just leave it as ABC and the student's initials. That way, if you have it open in your classroom, there's no real um, breach of privacy. You're using just some initials and other students will, won't know what the ABC stands for. In Google Forms, there are a variety of types of questions that you can make. Some people will choose to have a box that says name there, um, and then each time you use the form, you just enter the student's name. If you have an ABC form that is identical and you use it for multiple students, that's when you would have a question where you type in the student's name. What I prefer to do is have a different form for each student. So this way I know when I open up this form, every entry is just for the one student. And then I make a copy of this form and I'll change the title to include another student's initials. Um, so then I don't have a spot for name in here because I already know whose form it is. So in my ABC chart, I need to track the date. So if you open up the question box here, you can select from all these different types of questions. When you put date in here, it automatically will put this handy calendar option in here for you. The next question is time, and the same idea. Once you put time in here, it's a time is a question you can use. It will automatically put a time box in, and then you click on it, and it will bring up um, a clock option. I like to track the setting, uh, so where the behavior took place, and there's a box for other in case it happened to be none of these places. I always put in the most common things for the individual student. So each of my students that I'm tracking, their forms look different from one another depending on the types of behaviors and what is the most common uh, things for that student. The next thing that I track is antecedent. 
what happened directly before the behavior occurred. So for this sample student, I gave some options. I made the question not multiple choice, but you want to use check boxes because sometimes there's more than one antecedent. Sometimes there's more than one behavior occurring. So for most of these, I use a checkbox style question. I just put in things like transition from preferred task to non-preferred, a loud noise happened, or there was an interaction with a peer, interaction with an edu educator, or he was asked to complete a task. Next is when I track the behavior. These are some sample behaviors that might occur. And again, there's a box for other in case it happens to be a different behavior that we hadn't seen before. And then you can just type it in there. Again, you can click on multiple responses here. And then the consequence. So what happened directly after the behavior? He was sent to the office or removed to a quiet place, sent for a break, note home, peers laughed at, at the behavior or other. Again, you modify this for whatever you notice from your particular student that you're tracking. These forms are totally customizable, so you just put in whatever works best for you. You can also delete entire questions. So I'm going to share this with you on my blog. And if you want to copy the form and then use it for your own students, you can modify it and, and make it suit your needs or your students' needs. Next, we've got possible function of the behavior. That means, why do you think the behavior occurred? It could have been for attention, escape, sensory, or other. And I know some people don't track this. Um, so again, you would just delete. When you click on the question, you just hit the delete button there, and it'll get rid of that question for you. Um, and then I like to track the duration. So how long did the behavior occur for? Because sometimes it's just a short outburst and then other times it might be two to three hours your classroom's getting destroyed um, so tracking that can help later on down the road when you're looking at how long behaviors are occurring for and then lastly i track the intensity uh, so was it just a, a low intensity behavior or was it a high intensity classrooms getting destroyed kind of behavior i'll show you what this looks like when you're actually filling it out so you want to go up to the top and then this little eyeball is the preview button so when you click that it opens up and this is where you fill out the form so when you're on this side you can't actually fill out the form if i click on this nothing happens you have to be in preview mode in order to fill it out now you can see the calendar comes up time you can switch am pm and then you just enter in the time so i'll just put in 9 30 click your setting the antecedent, the behavior, consequence, possible function, duration, and the intensity. And then you just hit submit. So you can see how quick that was. For me, filling out the paper checklist was much more time consuming than that. Um, and I can do multiple at once. So if I didn't have time to fill it out in the morning and by afternoon we had four incidents, I can quickly go through and fill those forms out. And now I'm going to show you the best part. If you go back to the editing part of the form, this part, and you look over here where it says responses, I've got five. I just filled out five sample ones so I could show you what it looks like. So it shows you the breakdown of each question and how you responded to each question. So for date, this shows you the dates that each happened. You can look at the month and say, well, April April and May were, were worse than March, so maybe behaviors are increasing. You'll notice on the time question that there's a difference in color between some of the times. And that is because when you've responded more than once the same answer, it goes to the darker purple color. So 10.30, 12.40, he only had incidents at those times once each. But 9.30 is, is clearly a time that isn't good for this student. So maybe at 9.30 I need to find an alternate activity for the student um, or look at what else is happening at that time that might be triggering for the student. The setting graph shows me where most of the events happened. Then we move down to the antecedent question. But it does give you the breakdown here, and you can see that um, transition from preferred task to non-preferred is a big trigger for this student. And then the behavior graph is the same idea. It shows you which behaviors are occurring most often. And if you go down to consequence, you can see which consequences happen most often. 
And then we have the same type of graph for possible function of the behavior. And then we have a pie graph which shows us the duration of time that each of the behaviors was lasting for and the intensity graph as well. So that is how I track behaviors in my classroom for students that have some extra needs and it helps me to determine how I can change my behavior to help support that student and it will also help me with communicating with parents and other educators that work with the particular student. It may also help to gain more support for students from special education or, or other resources. So I hope this was helpful for you and if you have any questions let me know in the comments.